Hi guys, happy Wednesday. Um, we're gonna go over packet work, some virtual learning, and let's get into it. So first we have our math task. So for day 12 of math, we're gonna work with the associative property. So remember, we're used to working with the commutative property, which is just where the numbers switch. Associative property is where we're working with more than two numbers to multiply, and we're gonna use parentheses. So as you can see here, we have three numbers. So instead of eight, they did two times four times three. Now the parentheses, see how they're around both? It could be two times four times three or two times four times three. Now when we see parentheses, we know that's what you multiply first. So if I were gonna solve this, I would do two times four first and then multiply whatever I get here times three. So for example, two times four equals two, four, six, eight. Then I would multiply it by three and I would get 24. Or I could do two times four times three. So it's saying do what's in parentheses first so I have four times three, which I know is 12, and I would multiply that 12 by that two, and I get the same answer. So you're just grouping the factors in different ways, and your product is gonna be the same. It's not gonna change anything. So the big takeaway for today is that we're gonna be working with three numbers to multiply, and that's okay, but we're still gonna multiply them two at a time and then just go on. So for example, yes, we have three, but we're not gonna do it all at one time. We're gonna break it up into sections. So we would do this first, and then whatever we get, we would multiply by this one. So let's look at our math test. It says Chris and Katie each received four smile stickers a week. So I'm gonna write that. Four smile stickers a week for, I know I'm multiplying, three weeks. How many smile stickers did they earn all together? So if you're wondering, we're probably thinking, oh no, we only have two numbers, but I know I'm using the associative property. So I need another number to multiply by. I don't see another number. So we have to reread that equation again. Chris and Katie, there we go. How many people is that? One for Chris, one for Katie. So I'm probably going to multiply, multiply that by two because Chris and Katie each got four stickers and they earned that for three weeks. So there's our missing number, it's our people. So then it says how many stickers did they earn all together? So what I'm gonna do is instead of going all at once, I'm gonna group two numbers together and I'm just gonna do the four and three. You didn't have to do the four and three, you also could have done, oops, sorry. You also could have done the three times two and it would look like that. But I want to do four times three and then I'm gonna leave that two and get to it later. So I'm gonna do four times three, which I know four times three we did over here. We know it equals 12, right? So I have 12 times and then I'm just gonna bring that two down and 12 times two, so I'm gonna put 12 in my head and I'm gonna add 12 more. So 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So I know they earned 24 stickers altogether. So again, we're just working on the associative property, which means we have three numbers to multiply, but we're just gonna break it up into two at a time and take our time that way. Okay, so Let's practice more of that. So here's our model. It says two times two times four. They want you to look at it this way. So what they did was they made four groups and in each group they did two times two. So they have two groups with two dots in each. So this would be four, 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 and they have four of those groups. So let's look at that again because that's kind of confusing. So they have two times two times four. So remember, this is our associative property. This is our equation. You can see it over here as well. So what they said was, okay, I'm gonna make four groups. So one, two, three, four. These are our big groups. And then inside of each group, I'm gonna do two times two. So basically they did two groups with two dots in each group, and that's for one whole group. And I wanna find my total. So I would do two times two here, two times two here, two times two here, and two times two here. If I did that, I would get four plus four would be eight, plus four more would be 12, plus four more would be 16. If you don't wanna use the models, you don't have to. So it would look like it does over here. Remember the parentheses tell us, hey, look in here first and finish this. So two times two equals four, and then you just bring this down, almost like when we are distributing or decomposing. Then I'm doing four times four, which is 16. So either way you do it, you're gonna get the same answer. It's really just your preference. I know the models can be kind of confusing, so whatever you prefer, 
Then they did it a different way here. So remember I said you can kind of group whichever ones you want. So here they put the two and the two together, but down here they were like, okay, we're gonna break the two up and we're gonna group the two and the four together this time. So what they said was now I need two big groups. So here's my one group, two group, and inside of each group, I need two groups of four. So here's one group, two group, and in each group is four. Do you see that? So now we're multiplying two groups times one, two, three, four, same here two groups times one, two, three, four. So I have two times four is two, four, six, eight. Two times four is eight. When I add eight plus eight, I get 16. So it doesn't matter either. You could do it this way. Remember we said if you don't like the models, you could just do it this way. So what they did was, remember the parentheses say, hey, look inside here first. So I would do two times four, which I know is two, four, six, eight. And I would multiply that by two. And I know eight times two is 16. So if you notice, these two are the same exact answer. It's just a different way of doing it. So these were the same equations. They just grouped two different numbers together. So here they wanted the two and the four together, but up here they wanted the two and the two. So when the associative property comes up and you have to group them, you get to decide because it's your math problem. So there's no right way to multiply. It doesn't matter what order you multiply them because in multiplication, the order doesn't matter. Okay, so we are going to use these parentheses to group up. Remember, we're going to do two at a time and then multiply by our next factor. So I'm going to multiply 5 and 2. So I'm going to put my parentheses around there. And then I'm going to say, okay, what, what is 5 times 2? So I have two fingers. I could do 5, 10. So I have 10. Remember, that other number stays the same because we're just multiplying what we get here by our other number. So then I'm going to put three fingers up, 10, 20, and 30. So I know five times two times three is 30. So then I'm gonna come over here and remember I'm gonna choose two numbers to group together. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do two times two and I know two times two is four. So I know this turns into four times, my six stays the same. So I'm gonna put six fingers up and I'm gonna count by four on each. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So I know two times two times six equals 24. Then I'm gonna come over to number three and I'm gonna group two together. So I'm going to do six times two so I know six times two, I'm gonna put six fingers up and count by two, so two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Remember my three stays the same. So I'm gonna put 12 in my head and I'm gonna add 12 more. So 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Now I'm gonna add 12 more, so 24 in my head. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So I know six times two times three equals 36. Then my last one over here, I'm going to group the two and the five together. So then I know I'm going to do, nine is going to stay the same, times, then I'm gonna do two times five, so I'm gonna put two fingers up, five, 10. So I'm gonna put nine fingers up now and count by 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So I know nine times two times five equals 90. Then we're gonna come down here and what they want us to do is they're gonna, we're gonna find the missing number. So what we're gonna do first is figure out what the inside of our parentheses equals. So I know five times two equals 10. Now in order to find my missing number, it's really similar to when we do the inverse operation. So all we're gonna do is go backwards and we're gonna use the opposite operation. So I'm gonna start with the answer. Remember the biggest number goes first. I'm gonna use the opposite of multiplication, which is division and divided by, I don't know what this number is, so I'm just gonna divide it by what I got here. Remember, I'm not gonna put divided by five or two. I'm gonna put divided by 10 because I know five times two equals 10. So 80 divided by 10 equals, and I'm gonna count that out. So I'm gonna go up to 80, I'm gonna count on my fingers. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So I know that my missing number would equal eight. So I'm gonna put a text box in there and I know, I'm gonna make this pretty big, that my missing number is eight, okay? So then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do the same thing. Remember, I'm gonna figure out what my parentheses equals before I do anything else. So I know two times five equals 10, and then I'm gonna work backwards using the inverse operation to find my missing number. 
So remember, I start with the big, the answer, the biggest number, which is 20, divided by, I'm not going to put 2 or 5, because remember, I changed this into 2 times 5 equals 10. So 20 divided by 10, I'm going to count by 10s until I get to 20. So 10, 20. So I know 20 divided by 10 equals... 2, so I know that my answer over here is going to equal 2. So that is how we're going to do the associative property. We're going to finish up with our fluency. So again, we are working on the associative property, so we do have three, but three numbers, three factors, but we are going to look at two at a time. Remember, it's just so we don't get confused. So I put my parentheses around 2 times 3, so I know 2 times 3 equals, so 3 6, and then I'm just going to bring the 5 straight down, and I know 6 times 5 is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So then over here I did something really similar to our models. So what I did was I did two big groups, so I have one group here, one group here, and inside of each group I wanted to do three groups with five x's in each group. So again over here we have three groups with five x's. Once I add all of those up, I will get 30. Right, so I have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, and then writing a story, I always do remember just a word problem. So it says Miss Hasdevac and Miss Lopez each got three packs of stickers. So there's my three. In each pack, there were five stickers. How many stickers did they have all together? So remember, there's two people, Miss Hasdevac and Miss Lopez, so that's my two. Um, to know our answer is correct, remember, we're going to use the inverse. It's going to be really similar to what we did here. So I'm going to start with my big answer, 30 divided by, I'm not going to do 2 or 3, remember, because I changed that into a 6. So I'm going to divide by 6, and the only number I should get is 5, which I did, and I got it correct. Um, so that is it for the math packet. We're going to move more into the reading now. Okay, so I want you to read the narrative water sky so you're going to read you should have read the two book two pages before but we're going to read it all together here and they want us to so before we read we want to think why is Lincoln so nervous and tries to quell the panic rising in him so we are going to read water sky together remember good readers when they're reading they're visualizing right so you really want to put yourself in the character's shoes and expand on the reading so our big focus while we're reading is we want to look we want to listen for why is he nervous What's making him nervous in the story? Why is he having to quell his nerves? Remember, quell is just trying to, why is he trying to make himself not nervous? So we're going to read Water Sky. This is an American novel about a boy named Lincoln Noah Stonewright who is visiting the family of an Inuit whaling captain in Alaska. Remember, we read about Alaska. We read about how it's cold and how they kind of have a different culture there. In this opening chapter, the author describes Lincoln's arrival in the new climate. So... Lincoln is going from Boston, which is the um, northeast part of the United States, and he's going all the way over to Alaska, which is very, very cold, a very different way of living. They have a lot of different jobs, so it's a big change for him. So we're going to read about what it's like, what he sees. So here we go. Also, when we're reading, we are going to see footnotes. Remember, these footnotes just give us more information. And you'll know it's a footnote because when you see the one next to a word, like you can see um, there is a one right here. That means, hey, there's a little more information about this word you can go read down below. So footnotes just give us more information about words we might not be familiar with or maybe a culture. Chapter 1, Lincoln. A boy in a bright blue ski jacket and Maine hunting boots stood on a snowy runway. Under rumpled black hair, his crooked nose and wide brown eyes gave him an expression of good humor, although he was not amused at this moment. Yesterday he had left Boston and laid over an anchorage in high spirits. Now he was about to run back to the friendly jet that had carried him across to this barren Atlantic post. Suddenly a cloud, frozen, a cloud of frozen fog swirled over him. He could not see the plane or the sky or the flat snowscape that rolled endlessly out beyond the airport. Wrapped in, the ar in an arctic whiteout, he could have been upside down or sideways for all he could tell. And so he stood still. In a few moments he was standing in the sunshine again and the terror of the tundra blew off. He turned and ran to the airport terminal, his face happy with purpose. He was going to do what he had come to Barrow, Alaska to do. He did not look back. 
Inside the squat building, he waited until his eyes adjusted to the dim light, then nervously scanned the faces of the people who had come to meet the passengers. No face satisfied him. He repeated the words of the man to whom he and his father had talked by telephone several months ago. You will know me by my blue-rimmed sunglasses, Vincent Olegak had said. The boy glanced from face to face. There was no one with blue-rimmed sunglasses. You Lincoln know a stone right? The boy spun around, and his eyes met those of another boy. Y yes, yes I am. I am Cusick. Cusick wore a red woolen hat pulled down to his black eyebrows. A ruff of wolverine fur circled his darkly tanned face like a rising sun. He was dressed in white except for his sealskin boots. They were silver fur with, checkered, with a checkered border of black and white fur. As Lincoln stood, shook Cusick's hand, his family's old photograph of Eskimos came to mind. Oh, there's a number. This must tell me more about Eskimos down here. So Eskimos is a term referring to the Inuit and Yupik people from the Ojibwa word meaning maker of snowshoes. So I know Eskimos, maker of snowshoes. I have walked into those pictures, he said to himself. Everything is the same, the clothes, the boots, the faces. He stood quietly wondering what to do next. How are you? The young Eskimo asked. I'm glad you're here. His exceptionally dark eyes were slanted upward as if he were perpetually smiling. Remember that word perpetually? means like always or constant, so it's as if he always smiled. His cheeks were broad and high like those of Eskimos in the painting that hung above the fireplace in Lincoln's home. It had been a centerpiece for his childhood thoughts on rainy days and snowy nights, this one. The painting depicted his great-great-grandfather's whaling ship frozen into the Arctic ice for the winter. Kids like Cusick were playing baseball on the ice with the adult Eskimos and the Yankee whalers, as the whalers from Boston and New York were called. Lincoln managed to smile at Cusick. So as you can see, here's the picture, and here's the people playing in front of the frozen boat. So the boat froze in the Arctic because it gets so cold there that the ocean freezes. Vincent Olegak is sorry he cannot meet you, Cusick said. He is not well. Lincoln breathed deeply to quell the panic that was rising in him. So here's where, the, where we were talking about. Why is he, why is he panicked and what, why? For four months, he had thought about this man who was going to meet him at the airport. When he awoke at night, he would clutch his pillow and wonder how living with an Eskimo family would go. Then he would think of Vincent Olegak, his father's good friend. He was once mayor of the enormous North Slope borough of 88,000 square miles and 4,000 people, his father had said. But he is soft-spoken. He is one of the best whaling captains who ever lived, but he loves all whales. He is a scientist who goes beyond technology. He knows what the animals think and what the sea ice says, but most important, he is a loving man, a big man. When Lincoln had thought about meeting Vincent Olegak, he had felt better about going so far from home and had gone back to sleep. Now he was frightened. Vincent Olegak was not there. So as you can see, he was planning on Vincent Olegak being there, and he felt more comfortable with him being there to take care of him because his dad knew him really, really well. So anytime he thought of leaving his home and going somewhere really, really far away, which is scary, he thought, that's okay because I have someone my dad's really comfortable with and I know he's going to take care of me. But now he gets there and Cusick tells him, he can't meet you, he's not well. And that's when Lincoln gets a little bit nervous because he's in a new place. Can you guys imagine being in a new place without your family, without your parents, and you're relying on someone to take care of you and then you get there and they're just not there? So that's why Lincoln was really, really nervous. Maybe, Lincoln said to himself, mom was right after all. She had not wanted him to take this trip to the Arctic. Alice Snowright had never really said why, not even that it was dangerous or that she would miss him, but she had but she had let his father know exactly how she felt. Frederick, she had said to Lincoln's father one April evening, shortly before Lincoln was to leave, I'm going to say this once more. I don't think Lincoln should go to Barrow. It's not necessary at all. Her sandy eyelashes had lowered over her pale blue eyes, too late to hide her anger. She's sure mad about this one, Lincoln had mused, then given up trying to understand what was going on between his mother and father. Fortunately, they were all at dinner, seated at the big mahogany dining table in Lincoln's great-great-grandfather's house, which now belonged to his father. Lincoln could concentrate on balancing his peas on his knife instead of listening once more to this argument. But there was no argument. His father did not answer. The only sounds Lincoln heard were the clicks of silverware against the china plates and the thumps of the waves hammering the bay shore at the bottom of the big lawn. The plans were firm. Lincoln snapped back to the present, looked at Cusick, and swallowed hard. So remember, your question for the reading is, 
Why is Lincoln nervous? So remember, he's nervous because he's going somewhere. He doesn't know anyone. It's very different than his own life. He doesn't have his parents. And then he gets there, and Vincent Olegak, his father's friend, isn't there to take care of him, which is what he was expecting. Okay, guys, and um, that's it for the reading. But you guys can reread this and pay attention to those footnotes because those are going to explain a lot of the, um, the words that we might not know. Okay? writing they want you to write a letter to a friend telling them some fun things you have found to do at home so again you have this letter format and we're going to start with the date remember it's important to write the date because when you're writing letters letters are something people keep and you can remember when you're looking back when someone wrote it and different things like that so the greeting is to tell us who are you writing to so dear miss has or dear we'll just say friend so dear friend, and remember when we're writing, this is your message. So this is what you're wanting to say. So remember today, you're telling them some fun things you have found to do at home. So you don't have to indent. Notice we're writing all the way over to the side. I have found so many fun things to do at home, right? And you're telling us all about it and you don't have to indent because this is a letter format. It's different than paragraph format when you're writing a, an essay or paragraphs. So once you're done with your message, you guys can keep writing all the way down to the bottom and then you're going to end it by saying yours truly. So this is like, this is, this just means, okay, this is the end of the letter. It's been fun talking to you, yours truly. And then you sign your name so that we know who wrote it. So up here, I know who you're writing to, but down here, I know who wrote it. So you're signing it, right? To almost give it that credit as well. So I can't wait to hear what you guys have found to do at home. The last thing we're going to do for the packet word is do your linking verbs. So we're having two different sentences. We have compound sentences and complex. Remember compound, you're connecting with comma and, comma or, comma but, or comma so. And then complex is a little bit harder. We're going to use although, because, until, since, or unless. So we're going to go through this together and we're going to kind of figure out which words fit where. So number one says, Ramona ate lunch late, blank, she wasn't hungry for dinner. So this is kind of explaining why wasn't she hungry for dinner, because she ate lunch late. So let's look. Would it make sense to say Ramona ate lunch late and she wasn't hungry for dinner? Ramona ate lunch late, so she wasn't hungry for dinner. Ramona ate lunch late, but she wasn't hungry for dinner. Or Ramona ate lunch late, or she wasn't hungry for dinner. So there's only one that kind of tells us why she wasn't hungry. And it should be so, because Ramona ate lunch late, so she wasn't hungry for dinner. So it's kind of telling us why. It's like a cause and effect. Fred is an excellent dancer. Blank, he is a good singer, too. Fred is an excellent dancer. He's also good at singing. So which one could mean also? Fred is an excellent dancer, and he is a good singer, too. Fred is an excellent dancer, but he is a good singer, too or Fred is an excellent dancer, or he is a good singer. So or gives us an either or. And we know he's good at both, so it's not going to be or. But usually tells us it's negating something. So I'm saying this, but he's not too good at this. So if he's good at both, we want to use something like also. So and would tie those two together. Okay? So we're going to move to complex. These ones are really tricky, but it's okay. We're going to do them together. So we're going to fill in although, because, until, since, or unless. So since is connecting it, cause and effect, since something happened, it's creating this. Because is also cause and effect. Because this happened, this happened. Until is we're going to do something until. Although and unless, unless is we're going to do something unless I can't. So let's see which ones would work. So I will be in the race, blank, I'm not a very fast runner. So they're going to race even though they're not a fast runner. So let's see which one would fit. I will be in the race since I'm not a very fast runner. That wouldn't really make sense, right? I will be in the race because I'm not a very fast runner. I will be in the race until I'm not a very fast runner. I will be in the race although I'm not a very fast runner. So even though I'm not very good at it, I'm still going to do it. So although would fit best. I kept eating grapes, blank, there were none left. I kept eating grapes since there were none left, no. I kept eating grapes because there were none left, that wouldn't really make sense at all. 
I kept eating grapes until there were none left. So why were there none left? Because she kept eating them, right? So until would work perfect. Carlos will join the team. Blank practice conflicts with his piano lessons. So this is saying Carlos is going to join the team as long as his practice doesn't get in the way of his piano lessons. If they're at the same time, he's not going to do it. So Carlos will join the team since practice conflicts with his piano lessons. No, he doesn't want to do it if it does. Carlos will join the team because practice conflicts with his piano lessons. Mm. Or Carlos will join the team unless practice conflicts with his piano lessons. So he's going to do it unless this happens. And the last one, I asked mom to pick up some snacks. Blank, we were, and I cut it off. I think it says hungry, though. I asked mom to pick up some snacks since we were hungry. Or I asked mom to pick up some snacks because we were hungry. I actually want to figure out what that last part is so I don't mess it up. Yes, because we were so hungry or since we were so hungry. I'm going to go with because because it gives us a description. Why did we ask mom to pick up some snacks? Because we were so hungry. Since would also work because they are both cause and effect. But I just like the way because sounds. It sounds a little more natural. Okay, guys, and that is it for the packet work. If you guys did the virtual learning, remember you would be doing Tuesday because we're one day behind because you had that Monday off. So they want you to read an article here exploring. Then you can read a book in your favorite hiding place. Then they have your day two prompt would be if you could choose to visit any places in virtual exploration, which would it be and why? So you guys can do this again on Google Classroom and you could do a Google slideshow or a Google drawing and show why you would want to visit it or where you would want to visit, but make sure you tell us why. Maybe it reminds you of a special place or it makes you want to go there. It can be any reason, but just make sure you back up your reason with an explanation. Okay, and then you have Freckle Math, you have some STEAM, and then the last thing you have is your SEL journal. So your topic for today is, is there something you wish you were better at? What is it? So you guys can, again, this will be on Google Classroom. You can do a Google drawing or a Google slideshow. And it can be anything that you want to get better at, right? It could be a sport. It could be something in school, maybe something at home. So I would love to see that. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions on that. And I think that's it for today. I hope this made sense. If you guys have any questions, message me or comment below. Don't be afraid to ask questions because it's I know that um, associative property and all the writing is getting a little tricky. Okay, guys, I will see you tomorrow.